the, the purpose in a way is for the ACLU to defend unpopular people, organizations, and principles. If the ACLU doesn't do that, there's no point in an ACLU. For more than 90 years, the American Civil Liberties Union has defended the rights guaranteed by the Constitution and U.S. law. ACLU fought cases, often against the government, involving free speech, separation of church and state, civil rights, abortion, and individual speech rights in national security cases. Few groups have proven as polarizing as the ACLU. Whether defending a woman's right to an abortion or a pro-Nazi's march, the ACLU frequently takes on criticism from many sides. We start from a different perspective than the people who support the government or feel that we're imposing morality. We're looking at it from the individual's point of view, that the government is imposing its morality on them. Founded in 1920, the ACLU's first cause was defending the anti-war protesters during the First World War. Soon, the ACLU was defending the labor movement and free speech in public schools. But in 1925, the ACLU became a household name. The Scopes trial pitted the ACLU against Tennessee's law that prohibited the teaching of evolution in schools. The ACLU's Clarence Darrow defended teacher John Scopes. Prosecuting the case was William Jennings Bryan. When we represented a young teacher accused of teaching science that undercut the divinity, millions and millions of people said, what is this organization? This is crazy. This is a Christian nation. The ACLU lost the unpopular case, and Scopes was fined $100. But the trial established the ACLU as a major player in the separation of church and state in schools, a role it would continue to play right up to the present day. The ACLU spent the next two decades fighting free speech cases. In 1933, they successfully fought a U.S. government ban against James Joyce's novel, Ulysses. The organization also expanded its efforts, focusing on police brutality, Native American rights, and censorship of the arts. All persons of Japanese descent were required to register. The evacuees cooperated wholeheartedly. The Japanese internment issue was one of the great civil liberties decisions and actions in American history, and many people think one of our greatest disgraces. In 1942, in the wake of the Japanese attacks on Pearl Harbor, the government uprooted Japanese-American communities and forced thousands of U.S. citizens into internment camps. But the ACLU was in the case and took positions against the racial discrimination against Japanese. But the Northern California affiliate took a more aggressive position, the people in, Sa in uh, San Francisco and Oakland and, and that area, and they moved into the case on the ground that the entire idea of moving people into concentration camps on the ground of national security was invalid. That was apart from racial discrimination. It wouldn't have made any difference to have a broader group. Although the Supreme Court upheld the Japanese confinement, the historic case resonates today. It made us more sensitive to the possibility that the same kind of thing, in a different form perhaps, would happen with Arabs, Muslim Americans. So the ACLU, I think, was more aware of the questions and more ready to step in right away. In the 1950s, the ACLU successfully fought many civil rights and free speech cases. The ACLU also filed an amicus brief in 1954's landmark case, Brown v. Board of Education, which led to the ban on racial segregation in U.S. public schools. But because of anti-communists on the ACLU's governing board, the group remained divided on whether to defend people during the political witch hunts of the 1950s. Socialism has spread the shadow of human regimentation over most of the nations of the earth. And the shadow is encroaching upon our own liberty. It wasn't until the end of the decade, with the ouster of the anti-communists, that the ACLU won key victories that helped end inquiries into people's political affiliations. The 1960s proved a successful time for the ACLU. In 1964, the Supreme Court issued rulings on eight cases in which the ACLU was involved, and the organization prevailed in seven of them. They filed the initial motion in Loving v. Virginia, which overturned the state's ban on interracial marriage. We represented people who opposed the war, we represented racial minorities that were just beginning in the civil rights movement, women, feminists who were taking the lead. And that goes on and on in the 80s with gay rights, in the 90s with other issues, including church state issues, and more recently in the reaction to the 9-11 prosecutions and executive actions by the government. All of these were unpopular 
with the mass of people. In 1977, the ACLU tested its ability to withstand controversy when it defended the right of the Nazi party to march in Illinois. We are marching in Skokie to dramatize the fact that there is no free speech for National Socialists. People in Skokie had bitter memories of the Holocaust. Many of them were Jewish. Many of them had lost relatives in Germany uh, or elsewhere. But from our point of view, it was an easy case. If we allow communists to march peacefully, if we allow Benjamin Spock to demonstrate peacefully, if we allow the Jewish Defense League to demonstrate peacefully, how do we not let so-called Nazis, who are a pathetic bunch, not to march? The ACAU is basically thinking of equal protection. It's saying if some people have rights, why shouldn't other people have rights? It goes back to the First Amendment. And this is a quote from Michael Dukakis a card-carrying member of the ACLU, American Civil Liberties. I, I haven't joined the ACLU, nor do I have any plans. By the 1980s, conservative politicians had a new four-letter word, ACLU. <laughs> Playing off a perceived liberal bias within the organization, they attacked it as a way to bolster support among their political base. There were a lot of people whose views of the ACLU were confirmed by the nasty way that Bush referred to the ACLU, that the ACLU on the whole does much better in recruitment of money and members when there's a conservative presidency in office because people are more nervous, people who might be inclined to join the ACLU do so, but when you have a liberal or a, a non-conservative in the White House, people say, well, it's not so important, President X will take care of us. Today, the American Civil Liberties Union is the strongest it's ever been, and they've expanded their scope to handle modern-day problems, concerns like same-sex marriage, privacy issues, and especially issues arising from the modern war on terrorism. A whole group of issues concerns what the government can do to people it captures or takes into custody, whether they have to give them lawyers, whether they can send them to Guantanamo or someplace else without uh, either a lawyer or the opportunity to get out of imprisonment, and the ACLU has brought several cases, and some of these have involved American citizens. A second one that's related is the uh, anger at immigrants and trying to deport as many people as we have tried to deport, sometimes on flimsy grounds in, in local communities, uh, opposition to demonstrations, uh, the kind of things that have happened to uh, Occupy Wall Street and it's just a carryover from Benjamin Spock uh, uh, demonstrating against the Vietnam War or other demonstrators uh, throughout American history. So the ACLU has always been on the, quote, unpopular side. The good news is more and more people are saying that we're right, at least a large part of the time. 